Hi guys, my name is Leah and I wanted to talk to you about the raising concerns many of us have with the PSNI over the fines issued on the 6th of June to the Black Lives Matter rally supporters. I've been trying really hard not to jump the gun, but the more research I started to do into this, the more I started to see a pattern. I began to question if the PSNI were only targeting one group of people, the Black Lives Matter rally supporters. And this also got me thinking, why? Why? Why are they only targeting the Black Lives Matter supporters? Does it have anything to do with race? I'm going to talk you through how I came to question the motivation behind the police's actions in just a second. But first, I want to commend the organisers of the socially distanced rally on the 6th of June at Custom House Square. It was impeccably organised and they minimised risk as much as possible. Upon arrival, there were stewards handing out face masks, stewards guided and controlled the people attending and ensured everyone remained within two metres of each other. There were socially distanced markers on the ground so that you knew where to stand. The stewards made it clear that no groups of more than six people were allowed to be together and no households were to mix. They made everyone aware at the rally that it was being live streamed so everyone could hear the speeches even from a distance due to socially distancing restrictions. They ensured upon leaving that the crowd was controlled, there was no surge when the rally was over and I haven't left the house much at all during lockdown but I can honestly say that I felt safe because of the actions that the organisers took to minimise risk as much as possible. Over the last few weeks, I have witnessed an extremely different response from the police to other mass gatherings in Northern Ireland. Some of these gatherings even had politicians attending, but I'll get to that later. Yet the PS and I had, have had a quite a different approach when it came to other events held by anyone who wasn't a Black Lives Matter sympathiser or a person of colour. Other events and mass gatherings were greeted by no hostile actions, no fines and no cautions or prosecutions. It seems strange that they wouldn't take a consistent approach with other groups for doing remarkably similar things. The only people who appear to be on the receiving end of the PSNI's targeted approach have seemed to be the Black Lives Matter sympathisers at the rally on the 6th of June. The PSNI gave out a total of 70 tickets and now I want to talk you through Exhibit A. Exhibit A. On the 13th of June, there was a protest held to protect war memorials outside City Hall, Belfast. This is a protest in retaliation to a pre-organised rally for Black Lives Matter, which was then cancelled given the circumstances. This group showed up on the same day at the same time in the same location in retaliation. Following this protest, Police stated publicly that there were several protests across Northern Ireland on this day. However, no arrests were made and no fines were issued. If you look closely at this picture, you will see that in the background, police officers are, confer are conversing with protesters. If you ask me if they were really there to do their jobs, why didn't they give out any fines for breaking lockdown and attending a mass gathering? ITV reported that hundreds of people gathered outside City Hall so someone please enlighten me how this is any different. The only difference I see is that the police seem to have a double standard when it comes to giving these people on the opposing side of the Black Lives Matter movement a free pass. I'd also like to add that the or organisers of the protection of the statues protest weren't adhering to social distancing. Their organisers didn't even try to make an attempt to minimise risk for socially distancing and from this photo, very few of them even have masks on. Hatch, hashtag hypocrites at work. Exhibit B. On the 30th of May, the PSNI had major issues with groups of people at Newcastle Beach and in Bangor at Crawfordsburn. The PSNI were called to respond to a mass gathering of up to 200 people at Crawfordsburn. Guess how many fines were handed out for this mass gathering? You guessed it, zero. Zero fines were handed out at this mass gathering. Belfast Live reported that hundreds of people flocked to Crawford's Burn Beach in Bangor. No one in this picture is socially distancing. They also broke lockdown re regulations. The police arrived on the scene at the mass gathering and handed out zero fines. A 17-year-old youth was also charged with offences including assault on a police officer and is expected to appear in court. But I started to question... If there was a double standard that the PSNI only wanted to go after the Black Lives Matter protesters with fines, 
Do their actions imply that the PSNI think that it's okay for a large group of people to break lockdown for a mass gathering on the beach? But it's not okay for an important issue like racism or equality. You tell me. I started to question, why did the police only make an example out of Black Lives Matter sympathisers or black people for rallying to highlight an important issue while minimising risk where possible? The Black Lives Matter rally was peaceful and the police went after attendees with fines but won't hand out any fines for a mass gathering where a police officer was assaulted at the beach. This mass gathering also followed a similar incident in Fermanagh where police said almost 100 young people were moved on from the Muckross area. Again, no fines were handed out for this mass gathering. Exhibit C. Again, this is an example where a protest has taken place in Belfast where a group of people have exercised their right to protest over an issue they feel strongly about within their community. The police were present at the protests in Botanic. However, the only difference is zero fines were again handed out where attendees also broke lockdown rules. I'm sure many of you are beginning to see the pattern too. Drug use and its effects are clear to see. Tensions have been growing in the Botanic area of South Belfast. This is where drug users can get clean needles and return used needles safely. Over the last number of weeks, there have been protests outside this pharmacy. Organisers of the protest say this area has become blighted by issues caused by the needle exchange. They say fights, antisocial behaviour and drug dealing are a daily occurrence. But the Deputy Lord Mayor says these protests aren't helpful. What we have seen in, in, in recent weeks is acts of vigilantes coming out on the streets to, to attack drug users. I witnessed a young male a couple of weeks ago get actually been kicked to the head. So I think that approach is not helpful because it, all, all it does is demonise people who use drugs. Exhibit D. Deputy First Minister of Northern Ireland Michelle O'Neill defended her presence at the funeral of the former IRA member Bobby Story, which clearly bre breached regulations on social distancing and number of attendees at the funeral, which exceeded 30 people. Michelle O'Neill has repeatedly appeared alongside Arlene Foster at the daily COVID-19 media briefings, urging the public to follow the coronavirus regulations, but she felt she was above the rules and above the rest. She felt it was accept acceptable to not abide by the coronavirus guidance. As someone who's supposed to set an example for the citizens of Northern Ireland, she showcased that she didn't practice what she was preaching, highlighting that she's the new poster girl for hypocrisy. But aside from that, these people knew the risks and that there might be a chance that they would be fined for attending this very largely attended funeral of up to a thousand people. But the point I want to highlight and focus in on is that the PS and I were present at this mass gathering. But the only difference is, again, zero fines were handed out for this mass gathering, which was a clear breach of the lockdown and social distancing rules. As you can see here, there was a lot more than 30 people at this mass gathering, and it doesn't appear that there's any social distancing measures in place or minimising risks by wearing masks. Again, it raises an important issue and an important question. Why are the PS and I willing to give a free pass to these people but not the Black Lives Matter rally attendees. Why is there a pattern? Why have the PSNI only targeted Black Lives Matter rally attendees? Exhibit E. For those of you who are not from Northern Ireland, the 11th and the 12th are part of Loyalist traditions. Every year, large bonfires are set alight in the community, usually with thousands of people from across Northern Ireland showing up to celebrate the tradition. On the 11th night there are bonfires and on the 12th day they have parades across the country. Many accompany this with plenty of drink to celebrate. This year coronavirus regulations stated that no more than 30 people should gather outside together. However, the BBC reported that bonfires were lit in loyalist areas across Belfast with crowds numbering in the hundreds at some sites. Parades also went ahead, some of which appeared to break regulations for the maximum of 30 people attending. Again, the point I want to highlight is that the PS and I were, were well aware of this and again gave out zero fines for breaking the rules in relation to public health and coronavirus. What I want to know is why? Why, when they knew people would be breaking the rules and regulations for public health, did they not issue any fines? Why have they only targeted one group of people? So many of us feel that the response of the police to the Black Lives Matter rallies were biased in comparison to the way that they have 
handled other public gatherings in Northern Ireland. The actions of the PSNI have only deepened the mistrust and the lack of confidence many of us have in the police, especially people of colour. And many of us are beginning to question, is there an issue with racism present in our justice system? Many of us are urging the police to drop the fines, to drop the charges against the people at the Black Lives Matter rally. And I really do hope that the PSNI issue an apology to the Black Lives Matter supporters and the black community um, for the way that they have treated them in comparison to other people. I'm not alone in feeling that given their actions, they have treated black people and Black Lives Matter supporters differently than anyone else um, in very similar situations. I feel like they need to address why. Why? If it's not to do with race, then why were they the only group targeted like this? An explanation is needed with some honest answers to the questions many of us have. I urge anyone who sees this and feels this too to share this on your social media to add to the pressure on the PSNI and their pending investigation in relation to the actions that were taken on the 6th of June. Another way that you could add pressure is to contact your local MLA and ask them to speak out on it publicly. Um, you could contact the police ombudsman and I will put the email and their contact number in the caption of this post. Um, and you can lodge a formal complaint um, so that way they know people are not happy about this. Um, and finally, I there is a petition that is going round which you can sign. The more signatures it gets, the better um, and the more um, attention it will get. So I will leave the link for the petition as well in the caption of this post. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say was our voices make a difference and we all have a duty to call it bias as and when we see it. And to say nothing is to be complicit. So thanks for listening and yeah, thanks.